In my last two videos, I talked about the RTX 4070 Founders Edition as well as the Gaming X Trio from MSI. So in this one, I'm going to look at this Jetstream RTX 4070 from Pallet. It is very much so a no-nonsense GPU that targets users who prefer a less is more design. So let's see what features it offers, uh, how it performs when it comes to thermals, noise and power consumption, and of course, how it compares to the rest of the 4070 cards I managed to test so far. Let's begin. While the Founders Edition has a pretty compact design, the 4070 Jetstream is much larger. It is three slots thick and it is about 33 centimeters long, so you should definitely grab a measuring tape or at least check the specs of your case to make sure it will fit before you consider getting one of these. Design-wise, it does have this very dominant black look going for it. Most cards these days are a mix of black and gray, but this really is an all-black card with only the required GeForce logo breaking it up. I really think Nvidia should consider not forcing brands to include it. Anyway, there are a few nice details here and there, but nothing that really distracts from the overall minimalistic feel. It is a very well-built card as well, with a proper metal backplate and a plastic shroud, and you can really feel how much heavier it is than other 4070 cards. Feature-wise, it is a pretty basic card, which does fit the 4070 style. There is a fan stop mode, and that's about it. There's no RGB, there's no dual BIOS, no extra headers or anything like that. Palette's marketing mentions a backplate, which we can all see, and also an anti-gravity plate, which sounds really cool, but I'm pretty sure it won't defy any laws of nature. But the interesting thing about this card is that they went with a traditional 8-pin power connector instead of the newer 16-pin 12-volt high power connector, which actually makes sense for a 200-watt card. And I have to say it's quite nice not to have to worry about any adapters or getting specific cables, which is especially nice if you're just upgrading an older system with a brand new GPU. On the back, you get three display ports and one HDMI 2.1 port, which is pretty standard, and it is the same layout as on the MSI Gaming X Trio and the Founders Edition. But before we start talking about this particular model, uh, let's do a quick recap of the 4070 chip itself. So the 4070 is about 23 to 25% faster than the 3070, uh, depending on the resolution, which puts it roughly in line with an RTX 3080. And it is pretty much meant for 1440p gaming. So if we look at 29 games that I tested so far, it manages to hit 70 FPS or more in every single title without upscaling or 100 FPS or more if you add DLSS to that. And since it's DLSS 3, you also have a frame generation option which helps in some CPU bottleneck games like Flight Simulator, for example. The 4070 does okay at 4K resolution if you enable DLSS, uh, hitting 60 FPS or more in all of the 29 titles in the list. But I would generally recommend getting something stronger if you're really serious about 4K gaming. But if we stick to the 1440p resolution, a 4070 Ti is about 22% faster and a 7900 XT is about 33% faster. So it is very, very important that these custom RTX 4070s uh, don't go much above the $600 or €670 Euro MSRP of the Founders Edition. Uh, when it comes to power, the 4070 is an extremely efficient chip, especially when compared to the 3080 and the 7900 XT. And depending on your game time and energy costs, uh, that difference alone can make a pretty big impact at the end of the year, so uh, do keep this in mind. But let's see how this Jetstream performs. So in terms of clock speeds, the Jetstream comes in at 2756 megahertz on average, which is within a percent from the Founders Edition and about 3% behind the MSI Gaming X Trio. There is no memory overclocking out of the factory, just like on the MSI and most other custom 4070 models, but you can overclock it yourself if if you choose to do so. Frame rates are usually closely linked to clock speeds, but uh, when you have such a small difference between these models, you won't really get a noticeably higher performance. So the Jetstream matches the Founders Edition almost perfectly, and while the MSI is a few percent ahead here and there, you will never notice these 1-2% to differences while gaming. Uh, like I said in my last video, do not buy a more expensive factory overclocked card thinking that it will be significantly faster, because it won't. 
Power consumption is in line with the clock speeds, with the jet stream hitting 195 watts on average, which is just under the 196 watts on the Founders Edition. So it's a little bit more efficient than the MSI. And if you're not really sure what kind of a power supply you will need for this card, that will totally depend on your processor. So with a super efficient Ryzen 7 7800X3D, you could totally get away with a good quality 450 watt power supply. But if you go for a 3900K, for example, that can pull 300 watts or more, I would go for a 750 or even an 850 watt power supply. But with a mid-range CPU, a good quality 650 watt power supply I would say would be a good target to aim for. The larger jet stream runs a little bit quieter than the Founders Edition. Now, in my opinion, anything under uh, 38 decibels should be considered very quiet, but the bigger jet stream does offer some benefit over the Founders Edition, even if it's not as extremely quiet as the MSI. As a result, the Jetstream runs even cooler than both. Sub 55 degrees on the GPU under load is way cooler than it needs to be. The memory is cooled properly as well, which is always nice to see too. I could probably argue that Palette could tune their fans to run a little bit lower and a little bit quieter, as there is uh, no reason to run your GPU at 55 degrees instead of 60 degrees. But that is also my subjective opinion when it comes to noise. Uh, keep in mind, you can easily tune the fans a bit differently to your own liking if you really want to, uh, using something like MSI Afterburner, for example. So overall, my take on this card is pretty similar to the MSI. Uh, when you put an overkill cooler on a 200 watt GPU, the results are just pretty logical. It runs really cool and it runs really quiet. So it will again come down to either personal preference or the price. Now, I do like this very simple minimalistic look and I think it will work really well in an all black zero RGB build. They could have made it a bit smaller to improve compatibility, but on the other hand, the size is great for those larger tower cases where having a much smaller GPU just looks kind of silly. Uh, now, Palette nor any other brand uh, has shared pricing information before the launch, so we just have to wait and see what the actual prices will be. And as long as Palette can keep the price premium over the MSRP on a, let's say, reasonable level, I would say this card is definitely worth considering if you like this design. Uh, just make sure that the price doesn't get too close to the RTX 4070 Ti models, which will be considerably faster. Anyway, this is all I have for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, but before I go, let's take a few seconds to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Corsair and their Elite LCD XD coolers. These premium all-in-one water coolers combine excellent performance with a fully customizable LCD screen that can showcase anything you have in mind. With a low noise pump and the AF Elite fans, they can easily keep up with the latest and hottest of processors out there while keeping your system quiet. You can install them on a variety of sockets, including the latest Intel and AMD ones, and once the installation is complete, you can use the IQ software to control the RGB effects or sync them with the rest of your Corsair gear. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching. I will be posting a few more RTX 4070 videos, so if you want to stay up to date with all my future uploads, do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys, and see you in the next one.